OK. So um, what we have in this case, guys, is tangent of 11 pi over 12 equals tangent 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Obviously, we know we cannot evaluate for tangent 11 pi um, over 12. So what we need to do in this case is to go ahead and use our tangent formula. So um, again, we have to make sure, uh, we actually don't have to make sure we know our formulas. But we have to make sure that we at least know that we can the correct form of them, as I'll kind of explain later. So when we have the sum of tangent, that's going to be tangent of u plus the tangent of v divided by 1 minus tangent of u tangent of v. All right. Now remember, these are going to be um, provided to you. And the one big step that I would like you guys to do, is, especially while you guys are getting used to this, is to plug in the values. Evaluate them first. Plug them in so you know exactly what you're evaluating for. So it's tan of 3 pi over 4 plus the tangent of pi over 6 divided by 1 minus the tangent of 3 pi over 4 times the tangent of pi over 6. All right? I think it's just very helpful to make sure you plug in so you can say, all right, I'm going to call this my angle u and that my angle v. Identify them, right? Break it down. Spend a little bit extra time because you're going to make you know, little small mistakes that's going to make the whole problem go wrong. Um, the next thing we need to do to before we evaluate that is we need to know our unit circle. So I'll look at the first quadrant, even though we have this one going. So we have pi over 6, pi, four, uh, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Well, pi over 6, I know that point is going to be square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. All right, at this point in the game, I would, I would hope that we can look at that and say, I already, all right, I already know that's going to be uh, square root of 3 over 3. All right. Um, I don't really have time again to go over all this stuff, guys. Remember that's your x and your y. The tangent of pi over 6 is equal to your y over your x, which is 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. The 2's divide to 1. This is not the first time we've gone over this, right? Square root of 3. Then you rationalize the denominator. And some of you are just like, oh, this is boring. I don't think. But now you guys know that the tangent of pi over 6 is always going to be the square root of 3 over 3. All right? If it was 5 pi over 6, it's the same thing just in the second quadrant. Therefore, it's negative. Right? If it was 7 pi over 6, it's the same thing but in the third quadrant. So it'd be negative. And if it was um, 11 pi over 6, it'd be the same point but in the fourth quadrant. I'm sorry, third quadrant would be positive because it's negative or negative. And the fourth quadrant would be positive. Then we have 3 pi over 4, which if I was going to kind of continue my angle, I know this is pi over 4. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. That's over here. It's a direct reflection. If this is square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2, this is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Does everybody understand how I can take a look at what's in the first quadrant and just reflect it over? So the tangent of 3 pi over 4, which is again y over x, is going to be negative square root of, I'm sorry, positive square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. All right, so now we know the values of tangent for both of those. You have to be able to do this quickly, all right, um, and know it because, again, guys, this is stuff that is just a part of this problem. Now, but once we know these values, we just plug them in. Going back to like evaluating an expression in Algebra 1, plug them in. So therefore now, tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1, plus tangent of pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 3, divided by 1 minus tangent of 3 pi over 4, which is negative 1, times tangent of pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 3. OK, so everybody see how so I just plugged that in, Zoe? Got it? That. So now the next thing that students get a little bit mixed up on is with all these fractions. So I say get rid of the fractions. How do we get rid of the fractions? Well, if you have 3 in your denominator, you can multiply by that denominator in the numerator. So you can say multiply everything by 3 over 1 or just multiply everything by 3. It's the same thing. Then make sure you apply distributive property. And just let me know if you want me to work it out, because I'm just going to multiply this through to give you the next answer. And if you need, uh, want me to break it down a little bit, I can. Yes. Yeah. But is everybody okay with that? 
how I did. I can break it down if you want me to. But all I did is I just applied distributive property. Three times negative three is negative is negative three. Three times that the threes divide out to give you negative three. Here that becomes a positive, right? Minus a negative, um, and then you just again multiply that through. So now the next thing we need to do is multiply by the conjugate, right? We need to rationalize um, rationalize the denominator by multiplying the conjugate. So now I'll multiply by three minus the square root of three. And remember, when multiplying by the conjugate, you're multiplying by the opposite of your root or of your imaginary number that we use. So Maggie, the next step that I do now is I need to multiply this. And we notice that in the denominator here, we have the difference of two squares. Um, it's OK if I erase this, because I want to, I'm kind of running out of space. So I'm going to move everything over here. So now I rationalize the denominator. I like doing the denominator first because it's easier, because it's the difference of two squares. 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is negative square root of 3 squared, which is going to be negative 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. Does anybody need me to work that out? Because I'm trying to just make this go a little bit quicker. Is everybody OK with that? Okay. Then up top, you have to do FOIL. Now last time I did FOIL in my head, I made a mistake. So I'll do it again in my head, but just try to do it in your head as well and see if you get come up with the same answer. So here I have negative 3 times uh, 3, so that's going to be negative 3. That's going to multiply to give me negative 9. Negative 9. See, there you go. So I have negative, uh, negative 9. That's going to be negative 3, so that'll be negative 12. And then that's going to, no, 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 I got this one. I got this one. So, yep, so it should be negative 12 plus, Ah. OK, watch, watch, watch. Guys, watch. That's correct, right? That's one binomial times another binomial, right, Megan? Yes? OK. You guys don't need to do it all in your head. I would prefer that actually you didn't do it in your head um, so you don't make mistakes. But I'm just trying to make this instruct, just go through a little bit quicker. Right? And then you combine like terms, combine like terms. So it's negative 12 plus 6 squared of 3. OK? Now I can divide this 6 into both terms. So my final solution is negative 2 plus the square root of 3. OK? And that's it. Ta da!